Roping is becoming a lost art, which is a shame because the ninja rope is the greatest utility in any game ever. I'm not even kidding. Other games have roping-esque mechanics or grappling if you're a dirty heathen, but nowhere else can you find a roping system that's fun and challenging to start off with, but also takes many years to master. My favorite thing to do with the rope is just warm. In a warmer, you connect roping tricks to establish a continuous flow, just like skateboarding or hacky sacking or yo-yoing, all while trying not to fall, and falling is incredibly easy. In the early days of Worms Armageddon, your skill at the game was heavily tied to how fast and creative your warming was, and Salty K9 is shown here, one of the best warmers in my opinion, and he does moves that are super fast and hard to follow. Making your roping unpredictable and creative is a big component of achieving top tier flow. You also have a scheme called Roper, where you have to collect a crate that falls in a random spot on the map before attacking. You only get 12 or 15 seconds to pull this off depending on the variant of the scheme, and you need to master using Bazooka from Rope. Getting wins hinges on being able to handle last second moves. Rope races are one of the most skillful roping schemes. You just try to race from start to finish as quickly as possible. You have to know how to efficiently navigate all the obstacles you might see on a map, and there's almost no upper limit to how fast you can get. Big rope races are a popular variant, which give you a lot of room to rope. I still prefer the smaller sized ones though, just because roping through small tunnels is just more challenging to me. Wall to walls, spelled WXW, require you to not only snag a crate, but also touch several walls before you attack the opponent, typically played on these very linear maps made of only horizontal and vertical lines. You have to know how to rope consistently at top speed on these. Whatever roping journey you want to go on, I just wanted to cover some of the roping basics. And roping is sort of divided into moves. You have different moves you can do on the rope, and we're just going to start with scrolls, shadows, and spikes. Three of the most basic moves you're going to need for any rope-based scheme. Okay, so we're going to look at scrolls, spikes, and shadows in this video. Scrolls are one of the most basic moves, so we'll start with that. But even before that, let's take a look at how does the rope shoot out. And first off, we're on a warmer map. So you can download this map and rope along with me. The link is in the description and also where to put it. If I aim my rope straight up, and then I press space to release and space again to fire it again, it's going to shoot straight up every time, like that. Okay, if I angle my rope a little bit to the left, so I'm holding left now, and then I release and fire again, it's going to fire to the left with that same angle. So I'm angled, now I'm angled a little bit to the right, like this. Space twice, it fires just a little bit to the right. So the angle the rope shoots out at is a mirror image of the angle you're hanging from. If I'm hanging like this from the rope right here at a bigger angle, it shoots out to the right at a bigger angle. Hanging to the left from a pretty big angle shoots out to the left at a bigger angle. And there is a maximum angle to this. So once I'm about here, it's going to be as far left as it's going to get. If I'm hanging like almost, almost horizontally like this, it's still just going to fire at that max angle. So there is a max angle that it shoots out at, and that's uh, important to know. Also, yeah, if I'm like um, attaching to the side of the map like this, how's it going to shoot out? It's going to shoot out to the right with that max angle. Now let's get on to scrolls. So scrolling is when you go from left to right or right to left across the map like this. So you're just firing repeat swings and going from left to right or right to left. Or it could be in a rope race, you're going across an alley, which is a left to right section, and you're just doing the same thing. So give this a try. Start on the left side of the map and you can get a good bounce off this wall by extending and then pulling in and pressing up and left to launch yourself for a good, a good speed boost to start off with. 
So then we want to keep going as we go left to right. And you can just hold the right button. We want to get all the way to the right side of the map. Then try the same thing as you go to the left. So we bounce off this wall. You can do it softly or get a bunch of speed. It's up to you. And just hold left as you go across. So as you do this exercise, try to keep your rope length roughly the same distance from the ceiling as you go. That's a good way to sort of keep your balance. Typically when you're doing scrolls, you want to sort of stay the same distance away from the ceiling. If you don't take care to do that, you might sort of get lost in the land like that. Or you can get too high and go into the ceiling like that. So that's one good thing to keep in mind. We always want to sort of maintain that same distance from the ceiling, maintain control. And so as you're doing this, you can start to add speed. So we're going slow here, but you can start to hold up and left as you're going to the left. And you want to hold it for a really brief amount of time before you fire that next rope. And if you find that you're going like too fast, it's fine to slow yourself down. It's definitely good to practice going uh, as fast as you can. And there is a maximum scroll speed, so it's good to get used to that. Basically, if I'm going like this, that's about as fast as I can go. If you're going extremely fast, like this, there's some strategies to manage your speed. So you can actually just stop holding any directions as you fire that next rope. Let's take a look at that. So here, I'm not even holding any directions because I want to like just maintain control. So that's fine. Or you can just hold left or right. If you no longer need to build up speed, then that's totally fine. If you do need to build up speed, just hold up and left. You can also just hold up. So if I'm going like pretty fast, maybe on that one, I just want to hold up right here. Just holding up on those ones. And that's a good way to maintain control and not like launch yourself into the ceiling. So as you practice this more and more, you can start going fast like this. And you can do very controlled launches. So very controlled scrolls across the map with like very few ropes like this. Or you can use a lot of ropes. Now those are really fast scrolls that take years of experience to master, and getting to that level basically you're going really fast and you want your rope to be roughly vertical as you attach from rope to rope. So you're kind of releasing like right about here as you do those really fast ones. But that takes a while to master. So the main thing is we want to start with these just left to right scrolls. Just make sure that you are maintaining your balance here and not getting uh, too far extended or too far retracted with your rope and try to build up speed to the extent that you can. It takes a while to control it, but scrolls are really just one of the funnest things to, to master. And although this is going on a tangent, for rope races, you also have scrolls. So like right here, this is like an alley. I'm going left to right here. And it's a lot harder when you don't have much room, but you can apply the same principle. You want to sort of keep your worm at the same length away from the ceiling to the extent you can, so maintain your balance. And you can just hold left or right as you go through these. Sometimes it's good to build up a lot of speed before you go into them because you know it's really hard to build up speed once you're in there. So you might build up some speed on the side here and then just hold left as you go through. And you might just fire a couple ropes. That's a good way to deal with those situations. So to be a complete roper, it's good to know how to deal with any width of alley, just like being able to scroll from any distance away from the ceiling. And next, we want to look at shadows. So shadows are a basic roping move that can get you from a high part of the map to a low part of the map. So say I'm up here, I want to get like down here, and I want to do it in a smooth and quick way. You could just extend like this. It's kind of slow, and it might not get you exactly where you want, 
or you might even run out of rope. So one way to deal with that is a shadow. So the first part of a shadow is we get to roughly the edge. So you might attach your rope on the ceiling like around here, around here. It depends. You got a lot of leeway. And we want to sort of get our worm to be about here. So sort of over the edge, just to the left of this uh, little cliff here. So maybe get your worm about here. And then we're going to press space three times. Once to release once to reattach, and then once to release again. So it's spaced three times, and it happens really fast. And then at the end, we reattach again. So the goal of that, it gets me down here, and I'm attached again. So you'll notice that when I reattach the rope shot to the right, that's just because of the way the rope works. Since I was hanging from the, I was hanging to the right of the attachment point. That means the next rope I shoot off is going to be to the right. So a shadow takes three presses of space to do. And the key timing here is after you press those first two presses, so you release, then you shoot again, you really want to time that third space so that it hits right when that rope connects with the ceiling. Because if you wait too long on that like this, go right into the wall, and that's not good. So you want to get a really pinpoint timing on that third time you hit space, and that's going to get you the timing that you need. And so there's a million ways to do shadows. For example, I could go like this, take a while after my first press, and then do the second two presses later. And that's if you really need to compensate a little bit. You can do it from pretty far away, too, like this. So that's kind of a, an extended shadow. Um, you can also keep doing shadows. An example would be just going like this. If you do multiple shadows, like if I do like two like this, you would call that a double shadow, or if I do like three, that would be a triple shadow. Usually that's not very efficient. You could do it for style points, but even style-wise, it's not usually all that cool looking. So uh, yeah, don't do those too much. Um, another thing that you can do is really do the shadow super close to the ceiling. Looks like this. And you can get super, super close to the ceiling. Um, it can be pretty stylish looking. So much so that you even go to the right a little bit. Yeah, those ones are extremely close to the ceiling. They look cool. Uh, it's fun to practice. So lots of different ways to do shadows. And so if I want to get down here, I do a shadow. Or over here, if I want to get to the bottom really fast, I can do a shadow. You can also just drop down like this. So that's always an option. It depends on where you want to attach. So sometimes shadows are the most efficient way to get down. Sometimes uh, they're not. So here's something you can practice. So try shadows on the left side of this island, attaching down here. And when you get to this low part, sometimes you might fall down. So it does take some practice to get back up to the top of the map. But you can go like this. And you kind of want to fling yourself up. This is kind of called doing a climb, when you climb from the bottom of the map to the top. Just kind of fling yourself like that. And just keep doing it until you feel comfortable. And after you've done that, try the center of the map. So try attaching roughly here and shadowing so that you attach right at the edge of this island. And there's a bunch of things we can shadow onto, so I would say try this one too. Just get in the edge of this island. And also over here. So the far right edge. And that one's pretty easy. 
And for a challenge, there's so many obstacles to shadow onto on this map. But I would say try one of these small little things to shadow onto. Um, this one's actually a pretty good obstacle to shadow onto. So try like this. You really have to aim yourself super well. This is hard. And you might miss. So yeah, just practicing shadowing onto uh, any obstacles on the map is going to help a lot. Okay, now on to spikes. So a spike is when your worm hits the ceiling and goes straight down, like that. It's another way to get from a high location on the map to a low location. It's great in wall-to-walls, in rope races, in ropers, so most ropes games. And there's a bunch of ways to do spikes. So the first and easiest way is just to hold up as you hit the ceiling. So I'm just holding up. Or you could even just not hold any directions at all. And that gives you a pretty slow spike. So I just let myself fall. So that's a pretty slow spike. It doesn't like really get you down to this bottom area all that much faster. Um, you could also just like drop your worm again like that. So it kind of depends on where you want to attach. You can choose between a spike, a shadow, or just dropping your worm. Dropping your worm is often a, a safe way to do things. But for speed, a spike can be super, super fast. And the fastest way to spike is to hold up and right as you go down, or up and left if you're going to the left. So right here, I held up and right. It got me down there pretty fast, faster than just holding up or not holding anything. And sometimes these are called power spikes, at least if you're going as fast as possible, which I wasn't there, so let me just try again. You can go pretty fast... And that's a great way to get down from a high location to a low location, but there is the risk of crashing into the ceiling or crashing into the ground. And on top of that, if you're doing a sort of power spike method, you're really not going to go straight down. So like if I want to get down to this cliff and attach here, I'm going to have to make sure that my worm hits the ceiling well to the right of the cliff because I'm going to go down into the left. So you do, have, you do really have to aim these things. And a lot of times, just for safety, you just want to do a, a softer spike just by holding up. That's especially if you're going across the map with a lot of speed and you're really close to the ceiling. You might just want to keep things safe by doing a, a soft spike and just holding up. And just like shadows, you can actually do double spikes. So what would that be? That's if you bounce off the ceiling twice and then spike. So say I'm like at the edge of this cliff here, and maybe I want to attach to the right side of the cliff. Well, I don't have to just do a spike like this. I could also do a spike like this. So a double spike, one, two, like that. And it's pretty, it's pretty swag. Um, you can basically bounce as many times as you want. So it's all about where you want to attach, or if you're just warming for style, uh, it's about varying up your moves just to make things look cool. So for some spike practice, I would say start with just soft spikes. So you hit the ceiling and you're just holding up or no buttons at all. I would say try to aim for this part right here, the left side of the right island. And then get a little momentum, fling yourself up, holding up and right as you bounce off the land. And try the same thing on this side. Just want to spike and attach right here. So soft spikes, and you can do a soft spike in the corner. Like that. You can also do it facing the other direction, like this. And also try some over here on this corner. So you can get your rope to the upper left part of the map, get a lot of speed here, and then just do a soft spike holding up. And that's a great way to aim your worm. And I would say after you've done those soft spikes, do try some hard ones. So get some good momentum. And the middle is a good area to do this. So just get some good speed. And then try holding up and right. 
It's really hard to do it at full power, but when you get it, it's really satisfying. And you will fall a lot when practicing those power spikes, so um, it's just good to practice. For a bonus, also try to practice spiking onto some of these smaller obstacles. For example, uh, right here, I can spike onto this obstacle. For those ones, it's definitely much easier to uh, not do a power spike and just do a soft spike. Or we can attach right here. And I missed. Definitely take your time to aim. And the more you practice, the less you'll need to, like, aim on those ones. You'll just be able to do it a lot faster. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. This really just covered some of the very basics of roping. There's so many more moves to cover and just techniques in general. And if you want some more maps to practice on for rope racing, ropers, whatever, just go to tus-wa.com, the ultimate site. This is the longest running Worms League, and it's also a map and scheme database, along with other files that you might need. So if you go here and go to maps, you have a selection of rope race maps. We have like over 5,000. We also have ropers. We also have warmers. There are tons and tons of maps to practice on, and it's a good way to learn about new schemes also. And to organize games, you can definitely just hop onto WormNet, or you can come to one of the several discords below. So I'll have links in the description. So I'll see you next time.